All right, before I present a solution, let me just recap here. Today's birth rate is in decline massively in America. Socialists seem to have a vendetta against the nuclear family. But unfortunately, members of the far left are still reproducing despite global warming, which means that today's AOCs of the world are breeding many socialists. Little boys named Nine and little girls <laughs> named Tree are going to run this country someday uh, unless we teach our children the tenants that need to be used uh, to save our nation from this evil and future girls named tree we have to teach them about the ingenuity of america the fervor that we had for the next generation's life to be better than our own have to teach them core freedoms that both sides of the political aisle in america used to cherish and today halloween is the opportunity to teach your kids american greatness lesson one capitalism for well, dummies or kids, whichever, you know, maybe your kids are, you know, 23 and they're dummies. Take them trick or treating tonight. Here it is. Now, close your eyes and think back a decade or two when you were a kid. Okay, it might be more like five or six decades if you're me, but the sun is setting here and the leaves are falling and the temperature is cooling and Halloween night approaches and you've got one thing on your mind. Do I have enough candy? Principle number one, incentive. Halloween is the holy grail for kids right next to Santa. What other day during the year do you get a free pass to stick your grimy, dirty, little snot-filled hand into a bowl of candy? What other day do you get to stay up late just to eat peanut butter cups, Jolly Ranchers, Kit Kat bars, to your own content without mom and dad You know, saying anything. They've given you permission. It's the night. This presents the first core principle of capitalism, having a goal, incentive, something to work toward, an objective that's attainable for all kids on October 31st, no matter their size, education, economic status of their parents, nothing. They wish to collect as much candy as possible, and that's the key to it all. No grind, no candy. Which brings me to capitalism principle number two. No grind, no candy. It all starts with hard work. Now, it's not easy running house to house when you have very little legs, especially when your costume is shaped so oddly that you can't quite move your arms or when your scary mask is hindering your view. But kids don't question it. They just do it. They trudge on street after street until they're blurry with sleep and they're like, I, 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 and they're still going house after house, knowing that without a little work, their buckets are going to be empty. Without the sweat dripping down their Spider Man back, they'll have nothing to show for it. Without that burn in their legs, their candy dreams will be forgotten forever. Which leads us to capitalism principle number three competition is key now picture this you're six or seven your treat bag is heavy but your dad says you got to carry it yourself your little legs are getting tired you you started walking from door to door while the bigger kids continue at a steady jog you're slowing down you sledge up to the big white mansion on the corner of elm and yo uh, and oak and and you know the one it's the one you're going now this one this one is giving me full-size candy bars You ring the bell, trick or treat. Oh, you're so cute. The elderly woman smiles, compliments you on your costume. You say thank you because your parents taught you manners. But what you're really interested in is what's in the plastic cauldron she's reaching for. The one with the big goods. She brings it over to you and bam! It's Tootsie Rolls. Now you want to look at this old lady and like, where's the big stuff? Where's the good stuff? But you learn a lesson of capitalism. You got lazy. You got tired. I can't run as fast. You gave up. And the competition outworked you, outsmarted you. You let the bigger guys take control of the game and you lost because of it. Maybe next year you start at the big white house. Hmm? 
Capitalism principle number four that you can teach your kids. Private property 101. Forget the Tootsie Rolls. You just earned a nice paycheck after a hard night's trudging around like a little witch. 234 pieces exactly. You've counted them. You've counted them twice. You've argued over some of them with your brother or sister. That's 70 pieces more than your little sister earned. But who's counting? After arriving home, counting, organizing into different categories every single piece, there's still one step before the Halloween feast can begin. The trade. Two dum-dums plus a Reese's cup for six of your Starburst. Fair deal. Done. Traded. Pass over the dum-dums. In the spirit of Halloween, now let's talk about a truly terrifying scenario. What if, contrary to the principles of private property, every single piece of candy that you, your sister, and your friends earned while trick-or-treating went into one huge pile, and then everybody divided it up equally? At seven, you understand that's not fair. Or if dad comes in and says, wow, you have so much, I'm going to take 50% of it because I pay taxes that built the sidewalks that you walked on today. You would say, not really fair, dad. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, scaredy cat Sam, who's... Who's too frightened to walk past the ghost decorations on Helm Street, therefore missed out on the candy corn house, but still got some candy corn? Yeah, yeah, me, because I'm dividing it all equally. Yeah, candy corn. You didn't even want any candy. Everybody hates candy corn. This is the laissez-faire house, okay? I earn it. The candy's mine. That's the way it works. Now... The spirit of Halloween does not end tomorrow, which is monsters, ghouls, live among us every day. They live, kids, in a place called the Capitol, Washington, D.C. They gather daily, conspiring their evil plans under their scary masks, with their loud, wicked laughs. They plot to take your candy and all the future candy that you are trying to collect. So, when you hit the streets tonight with your little one, please do not, do not pull them aside and tell them about Aunt Adam Smith. Don't do it. Supply and demand. Free market. They're not going to understand that. But they will understand all four of these principles. And if you have not... There is, in my household, a tax on everything. And I started it with my kids very young, and they understood... Yeah, taxes aren't fair because sometimes dad just decides what the tax is. Hey, dad, while you're up, can you get me a bowl of ice cream from the fridge? Sure will. I put it all in a bowl. Is this how much you want? Yeah. Okay. I eat about a mm, scoop and a half of it by the time I deliver it to the couch. What the, What are you doing? Well, I mean, I pay for the fridge. I went and got it for you. Son, it's called a tax. That's not fair. I know. Remember that for all time. And that is the capitalist joy of Halloween.